Okay, so we're getting to an issue now where the uh, the geometry that um, I have for my, my edge flow here isn't really working for what I'm trying to get in terms of my sculpt. Now I could just probably keep adding subdivisions and uh, that would work for a little while, but you can see I'm starting to get this kind of shearing stuff going on here and that is because the edge flow is a grid, but I'm trying to get a circular uh, circular shapes here out of the, uh, the the sculpt. So for the rest of it, like for the you know the body and stuff, it's 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 in the maybe well the truck's pretty bad too. That's gonna at this point because it's smooth we can't really see too much, but it's pretty stretchy. But the ear is really bad, so the ear is gonna be very difficult to get any kind of fine detail into. You can kind of see those polygons here. So what I'm gonna do is Z remesh this. And what Z remesh is gonna do is kind of look at the geometry and kind of do a quick and dirty uh, retopology on it. That's so quick that it makes it totally cool that it's a little bit dirty. Uh, ultimately, if this is going to go into a game engine, I, I don't know, I might want to uh, retopologize it by hand, but you know, for this this uh, simple sculpt, it's, it's not a big deal. So, the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the geometry. And I'll go ahead and turn solo on. So now I've got two identical subtools, same number of subdivisions, same polygroups, exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is grab one of them, doesn't matter which one, and just go to Z Remesher here. That's going to live in the Geometry tab. So uh, the only setting I really worry about inside Z Remesher is the target polygon count. This 5 here means it's actually going to try to make 5,000 polygons. So like the, the lowest subdivision of our new subtool will have 5,000 polygons. So that's a little bit high, and I, I find that something closer to the neighborhood of 1,000 polygons is fine. And what this Adapt here means is uh, that's it's going to do its very best, but there may be a scenario where it feels like it needs to uh, kind of go over a thousand. And if you're not really picky about what your target polygon uh, polygon count ends up at, adapt is going to be fine here. So go ahead and hit Z remesher. Okay, so here is the new mesh, and that took a little while, maybe maybe a minute or so, and and uh, you can actually increase that speed by reducing your your starting polygon count but for most of it this is pretty good I'm pretty happy with this there's a couple of spots here where where it might need some uh, some work but the one spot where I'm still not crazy about it and I, this is just based on the fact that the 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 actual high poly didn't really have this detail in there is what I'm really looking for from this part of the geometry is is concentric rings or just a little bit more concentric uh, uh, topology going on there. So what I'm going to do is we can just keep this one around, but I'll go back to the original here, and I'm going to duplicate it one more time. This is just to kind of demonstrate how this kind of works here. Uh, so the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this brush here called Z Remesher Guides. Now the way you get there, if you've got something all selected, is you just open the brush menu, and you can look around forever, or you can just hit Z and that will sort uh, for the only two that are that start with Z, the only two brushes here. So I'll grab Z Remesher Guides and also uh, I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the polygon count a little bit. So what I'm going to do, now that I've got my low poly here, this is definitely not going to really show up as a feature if the high poly didn't really trigger the May Concentric Rings thing, but this is definitely not going to. So what I'm going to do is just draw a couple of circles sort of where I want those eyes to be. And that's probably all it's going to take. Let me go ahead and do one more around it. And so as the zero mesher goes over the surface, it's going to say, ah, the user wants me to kind of put some concentric rings there. And it should do a significantly better job. So let's go ahead and run Z-Mesher one more time. Same settings, target polygon count being 1. And remesher. Alright, so that took a lot less time because I was starting from a lower polygon count. If I turn the polyframe on, now we see I get these nice concentric rings here. So that's going to support uh, you know, eyelids and that kind of detail much, much better than, than the grid. And the rest of it looks fine except for whatever is going on over here in the foot, which is just easily smoothed out. So now I've got a new problem which is also it'll give you a nice center line just in case your Z-Spheres uh, didn't have a, Z, uh, a center line I'll smooth some of this out. So um, the problem that I've got now is I've got this low poly geometry and I've got this high poly geometry 
and I need this detail projected onto my new low poly. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, the first uh, zero measure result here. So I just hit delete in the subtool menu. So what I'm going to do is hide all of the subtools except for my low poly and make the target polygon here visible. It only needs to be visible here. You can have solo on. And I prefer to have solo on because what we're going to be doing is kind of switching back and forth as we project that high poly detail onto the new geometry here. So the first thing I'll do is give it one subdivision. So I'll just hit Control D, or you can hit Divide here in the geometry tab. And then also in that uh, in this uh, here it is in the subtool menu, uh, because we're sort of comparing two subtools, they decided to put the project all button in the uh, the subtool menu, even though it's really uh, making a lot of geometric change. So uh, what we're going to do is just hit project all here. And what it does is it looks at the target, the selected geometry, and it will just shoot rays up and down from each vert. And whenever it hits a surface, it's going to snap directly to that surface. It's going to move the selected geometry to the visible geometry. So this stuff here, if I had this showing, it would be sort of trying to stretch out and it would close in on the eye and look really bad. So you got to make sure that you don't have anything visible that you don't want to be a target for the projection. So I'll hit that one more time and project all. And one more time and project all. And so the goal is get this new geo to the point where you can't see the difference. Now if I if I flip back and forth here by clicking on the two subtools, I can see there is uh, still some crunchiness here that's not really visible in, in the high poly, although obviously there's some crunchiness there as well. So I'm going to go one more subdivision here, and we'll do one more project all. Okay, so now hopping between the two, don't see too much difference, and in fact, some of the stuff that we're getting here is actually going to be the result of it just projecting that bad geometry. If I smooth it out, now I've got nice, consistent density, and I'll be able to get uh, a lot more detail out of the ears and the eye. So, uh, this is now set up to continue sculpting on, but there's one thing I want to show you before we move on with the sculpt, and that is the polygon count. So so these are pretty much visually identical. I mean, there's a little bit of a change or whatever, but like just generally speaking, it's the same amount of detail from, from both pieces of geometry. But if I mouse over the new one, what I get is a polygon count of about 700,000 polygons, whereas for the, and this is the, uh, this is the, the retopologized Z-remeshed geometry, and on the original one, the Z-spheres, I'm getting almost three and a half million polygons. So, you know, 700,000 polygons versus three and a half million. So what you get with, with the Z-Remeshed is not only is it going to uh, hold your sculpting better, which we'll see very soon, it's also a, a whole lot lighter. So you don't have to worry about, you know, kind of running into the, the ceiling of your, your, your system's uh, limits. So anyway, that is Z-Remesher and uh, Hopefully that's going to be useful for you. Let's go ahead and delete now the original high poly. We don't need it anymore. We turn solo off. Get the visibility back on for our other subtools, and we can continue the sculpt.